Hey there, bio students. When I was a TA as a grad student, the first class I ever taught was a biology workshop and the entire class was dedicated to teaching intro level science students at a top university how to organize their information into these different organizers and planners. We have tables and we have charts or flow charts. I've been using this for years. If you'd like a copy of this, I will have the link below. This is a table that grids the four macromolecules and some of the important aspects of those macromolecules. You'll see on the left hand side we have monomers and polymers. We have bonds because there's different bond types. We have functions, locations, and we can throw in there some food sources. They apply to some of these macromolecules, not all. The content from this chapter is I think my most popular video. So I know that this is a really poignant topic. It relates to a lot of things. It relates to nutrition. It relates to biochemistry and of course just biology and if you don't get this down now it's going to be much harder when you go into those higher level courses it could be really hard when you're learning from a textbook or a lecture because it's very linear it's this and then this and then this and then this my biggest suggestion is to put as many things as you possibly can into a table. I'm also making a couple more related to this chapter. So let's walk through this a little bit. Again, on the top, we have the four macromolecules. We have carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. We're gonna start with monomers and polymers. Of course, the monomers are the building blocks of these larger macromolecules. Mono means one. If we take a bunch of monomers and put them together, we're gonna make polymers. So the monomers for carbohydrates are called monosaccharides. There's different types of monosaccharides. That's just a, an umbrella term. I have drawn here a couple of basics. We have hexoses. Anytime you see ose, that's a sugar or a carbohydrate. Hexose is a six carbon sugar. Here we have two hexoses, glucose and galactose. And these also happen to form a six member ring, just like the blue one we see here. Pentoses are five carbon sugars. For example, ribose and deoxyribose, which make up the sugars in RNA and DNA. Now I have here fructose. This is actually not correct, and can you tell me why this is not correct? If you look at the molecular formula of fructose, it's C6H12O6. C6. So there are six carbons in fructose, so technically it's a hexose. However, I wanted to make this mistake on purpose because what's different about fructose, it exists in a five member ringed structure. So just because something is six carbons doesn't mean it has to be in a six member ring. And just because you see a five member ring doesn't mean there's only five carbons. Fructose is a hexose that exists in a five member ring structure. And these are all examples of monosaccharides. If we take these singular units, these monomers, and group them together, we start building larger molecules, macromolecules. Now lipids is a interesting one because lipids are not true monomers or polymers, so they don't have building blocks. And even with the polymers that I have here, they're really not polymers because you can't have polymers if you don't have monomers. But I put in the three types of lipids down here and I'm making another worksheet or another chart that goes a little bit more in depth into the four types of macromolecules and different aspects of them. So this was stolen off of that chart. So three types of lipids is on here. Proteins, the monomers are called amino acids and we know that there are 20 of them. Here I have the basic example of an amino acid. We have a central carbon, a carboxyl group, a mean group, a hydrogen, then we have a side chain R group here. And this is what's going to be different amongst all of the amino acids. All of this stays the same. We can build polypeptides, which then can be folded into functional proteins and enzymes by linking these together in specific orders. And then of course we have nucleic acids. Nucleic acids are DNA and RNA. Those are our polymers, but what are the monomers? We call the monomers nucleotides. Now there's a couple of words here that sound really similar. Nucleic acids, nucleotides, and nucleosides. Nucleotides have three components. We know that there's a phosphate group. We know that there is a sugar and there is a nitrogenous base. For nucleosides, look at the S here. With a nucleoside, the sugar is linked. So a nucleoside is adenine, the nitrogenous base, 
plus the sugar. Adenine plus the sugar is adenosine. Guanine plus the sugar is guanosine. Cytosine plus the sugar is cytidine. Thymine plus the sugar is thymidine. Uracil plus the sugar is uridine. So these are all nucleosides. So nucleotide is different from nucleoside. For polymers, the polymers of carbohydrates are called polysaccharides. Again, we have the word saccharide. Saccharin means sweet, so these are all sugars. Polysaccharides. The examples here are glycogen, starch, and cellulose. And notice that they're all strings of the same monomer, which is glucose. These are all glucose polymers. The only difference is how they're linked together. Sucrose is another type of polysaccharide, but this is a special type of polysaccharide. It has its own name. It's called a disaccharide, and di means two. So disaccharides are just two monomers put together. Sucrose is glucose plus fructose, and this is table sugar. So table sugar is a disaccharide. Again, lipids do not have monomers, so they do not have polymers. However, I do have the three types of lipids. We have fats or fatty acid chains. We have phospholipids, which make up our plasma membrane and all of the membranes around our membrane-bound organelles. And we have steroids. This is a four-ring structure that's the basis of cortisol and estrogen and progesterone and testosterone and others. Of course, again, with proteins, when we build our amino acid chains, we make polypeptides. This is just a linear chain of those amino acids held together by a specific bond, which we'll see below, but that bond is called a peptide bond. A protein is only functional when it has been properly folded. This chain needs to be in the correct order, but then it needs to be folded properly because with proteins, form equals function. So it has to be in the correct form to function properly. So note the different terms here. Polypeptide, peptides is another word for something related to proteins. So polypeptides is just this chain, a lot of amino acids put together. A protein is when that polypeptide becomes functional and the type of functional protein that we go over often is an enzyme. As far as polymers for nucleic acids, we have polynucleotides, right? We had nucleotides, which are the building blocks, and now we have polynucleotides. We have DNA and RNA as our two types. Note, I have another little table within my table here and some major differences are double versus single-stranded. We have the nitrogenous bases in DNA versus RNA. Notice T versus U. We have the enzyme that builds it. DNA polymerase builds DNA. RNA polymerase builds RNA. And then we have the full name, deoxyribonucleic acid versus ribonucleic acid. Note that this is a different sugar that's in here, right? Deoxyribose is the five ring sugar and ribose is the five ring sugar here. And you should know the difference between the two of those. As far as bonds for carbohydrates, they're called glycosidic linkages. And there's a couple that you've probably learned. There's one for alpha glycosidic, and these are involved with glycogen and starch. And there's one for beta glycosidic, and this is in cellulose. Here they are, right? Glycogen starch versus cellulose. Now, do you know which of these we cannot digest? We can't digest cellulose. This is what we would call fiber. It's an insoluble fiber. We can't digest it because we don't have the enzyme to break up this particular type of glycosidic linkage. We can break up these. We use lots of starch and glycogen. Our energy source is glycogen, but we do not have the enzyme for this linkage. For lipids, they use a special bond called ester bonds. They link glycerol backbones to fatty acid chains. So glycerol here has hydroxyl groups that come off of it and the hydroxyl groups are where these fatty acid chains like these here which can be they can differ in their length they can differ in whether they are saturated or unsaturated meaning they have no double bonds or that they do have double bonds that's going to affect a lot of things about them they're going to attach onto these glycerol side chains through ester bonds so this is going to make a triglyceride. If I had three of them coming off of the glycerol, that's a triglyceride. Proteins use peptide bonds, and it's always going to be, here's our two just basic amino acids. We have the carboxyl group of amino acid one attaching to the amine group of amino acid two. As far as terminology with peptides, there's always an N terminus and that's going to be the end with the amine group here. And there's also a C terminus, and that's going to be with the carboxyl group here. 
So if you have a chain, it doesn't matter how long it is, let's look at this one here, we'll have the N terminus down there and then the C terminus down there. And it's always going to look like NCC, 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 with the R side chain coming off one side and the hydrogen coming off another. This is a single bond, so it can rotate. So it doesn't always have to be with the R groups on one side, the R group can be on this side as well. It's all going to depend on the protein itself and how it needs to be folded to function properly because these R, these R chains can be acidic, they can be basic, they can be hydrophobic, or they can be hydrophilic. So all of that is going to determine how this protein is going to function. For bond types in nucleic acids, we have the phosphodiester linkages, and these are what are going to attach one nucleotide to another. Again, the three components of a nucleotide, we have the nitrogenous base, which is not shown, so that's going to be ATCG or AUCG. That is going to be attached to a sugar. If it's RNA, it's going to be ribose. If it's DNA, it's going to be deoxyribose. So that would be this sugar. On the three prime, the three prime carbons, so when you count them, it would be one, two, three, four. The hanging off would be five. And this is likely an oxygen. This is where we're going to link the three prime OH of the pentose sugar of the nucleotide to the five prime phosphate group of another. And so it's a 3 prime OH of a pentose sugar of one nucleotide to the 5 prime phosphate group of another. As far as functions, with glycogen and starch, these are both storage molecules. Glycogen is storage for animals, like ourselves. We store glycogen in our liver and muscles. This is again just glucose chained up with 1,4-alpha glycosidic linkages waiting. Whenever we have taken in extra energy, extra sugar, our body automatically will store it as glycogen, fill those stores, and then they're going to start moving it into fat stores. So glycogen is energy and glucose storage for animals. Starch is same thing, energy and storage for plant cells. So you might know that rice or potatoes are very starchy and that's their way of storing excess glucose for a later time. Cellulose is the cell wall structure. Again, we cannot digest this, but this is going to be a fibrous, this is strong. So cellulose is in the cell walls, rigid cell walls of plant cells. Fats we should know is our energy storage, it keeps us warm and it acts as cushion. Phospholipids are what are making up the membranes, the plasma membranes, the phospholipid bilayer. This four ring structure makes up cholesterol and hormones such as testosterone and estrogen. Functions of proteins, proteins are about 50% of your dry mass. If you remove all of the water, and you can see why, look at all of the things that they do for us. The big one is always enzymes, but we use them for defensive proteins. We use them as storage proteins. Transmembrane proteins through the, the plasma membrane of the cell to move things into and out of the cell. Steroid hormones over here, while well, we also have protein hormones. There are receptors. Whenever we send out a hormone through the body, it's going to go through the blood. You don't want a hormone to signal every single cell in your body. You want it to go to somewhere specific. So that specific cell that it's going to needs to have a receptor. We have motor proteins that are going to be myosin and kinesin, moving things throughout the cell along these highways made of microtubules, and of course, proteins are making up the structure of the cell. Proteins are the doers. Look at all the things that they do. Defense, building and breaking bonds, storage, structure, transport, motor, receptors, hormones, and function for our nucleic acids. Of course, DNA has our genetic code, and this is read in base pair triplets. When you read the DNA, we create mRNA, messenger RNA, this transcript carries codons. We have tRNA, which is transfer RNA, and this is the RNA that delivers amino acids to the ribosomes. It has the anticodons, which can bind, read and bind to the codons and delivers the proper amino acid. If this is all new to you, I have lectures on this. And we have rRNA, which is ribosomal RNA, which is made in the nucleolus, and this is going to help make ribosomes. So that was just a quick refresher, a review, if you needed something before an exam. I hope that 
that was helpful. Again, you can grab a copy of this below. If it was helpful, please let me know. If there's anything else that you think would be helpful or any materials that you can't find, please let me know. I'd be happy to make them. Best of luck in your class. I will see you next lecture.